He is OG, and sometimes OGs have a hard time letting go of a rebrand. We didn't lose the grace. The grace is in our hearts. And the name is Pearlside, but the grace is still alive and strong. It is God's grace that allows us to sing about victory. It's his grace that allows us to be able to commune with a heavenly father that is relational and not distant, like on some moon planet a million miles away that he wants to have a vibrant relationship with you. I'm so glad that you are here. I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm blessed that we have moved to tier five. I have no idea what that even means. But that is closer and one step closer to ditching um, the life of the pandemic and moving forward. I believe that with God's grace and his power, who is the great physician, can truly crush any ailment, anything that would be considered a virus. Yes, we believe in science. Accompanying that science is the great physician that really needs to eradicate this thing as we are moving forward. I was able to spend some quality time with some of my kids watching a fight last night. And uh, this is a trilogy between two competitors that battle a mix martial arts, Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor. My Irish accent is terrible. And uh, they started going, I saw some leg kicks. And then at one point, the jujitsu in me started going crazy because Conor started to rip off a guillotine choke. You put your arm over a neck, you cra cra clasp your fingers, and you squeeze, and I kind of squeeze all that you can to get uh, that person to tap out. And he missed. And then here comes raining down on Conor McGregor's face and ears, pounds and punches coming from Dustin Poirier. And then they get up, and towards the end of the round, if you watch any of the highlights, they're squaring up, and Conor stepped back, and his whole entire lower leg snapped in pieces. The one and only time I've seen someone submit themselves in a fight of that magnitude on one of the biggest events and moments of his life, he submitted himself. And so the doctor literally had to tell him, you have been tapped out. You cannot continue forward. You have been submitted. And typically when we hear the word submission, we think of, I do, the phrase tap out but in the bible there's a word called submission and when you take a deep dive into the foundation of the word and the phrase it's about tapping in and i entitled my message today tap in so can you tap tap in with me to ephesians chapter 5 We'll start off in verse 21. If you have your physical Bible, that is great because I love encouraging people to actually take physical notes on tangible paper. And if you are in the digital realm and analog is not your deal, go ahead and make some uh, mental and digital notes in whatever device that you guys carry. If you've listened to any messages that I've preached a couple of times or a couple of years, this is year three of us really moving forward here at Pearlside Church, Kapole. When I go through a Bible verse, when I go through the Bible, typically I make it come alive with different types of stories and I, I try to connect it to relevant culture because I value your education. I value that you can actually read. And so it would be weird for me to stand up the entire time and for 30 minutes read the Bible line by line, word by word. And I think there are some theologians in here that wish that I would actually do that. And so I, with my style, want to make the Bible come alive. And so a lot of times I'll make it like, there's, there's not that in the Bible and I kind of put my my sprinkle on it, the WIV version, the weighted version. 
But there's times where I really need to slow down and let the Bible do its work. And I felt like this was the time to do so word by word, line by line, especially because my wife is not here. And she has joined our E. Ohana online because she has like the sniffles, and I didn't want the sniffles to come all up on you. So it was by one of my choices to say, woman, relax and stay at home. I need to read the Bible. Are you ready? Articulation, enunciation, clear diction of the word of God. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For, and I'm just reading the Bible, clear articulation of the word. Not trying to sprinkle my own flavor, not trying to make it more than what it is. I just want to read the Bible. For the husband is the head of the wife. I feel the blood boiling here. As Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is the savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. I didn't get a lot of male amens. I didn't get a lot of male chihus. Oh, that was a test. You failed. You are the head because she allows it. Father, all across this place, I thank you that you give us a picture on how it's supposed to be. And Lord, we apologize that we have twisted, at times over centuries, ministers have manipulated, households have manipulated this passage without the full understanding of what true submission is. And God, I pray today, as we tap in, we could understand we don't need to tap out. That submission would be welcome, Father, when we understand the lens in which to look at it from your lens. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. There's another part of the passage I, I should just really just glance on by. Right, ladies? No clear diction, no articulation, no enunciation. It's in there. No. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up. And poured out his life and drained out all of his blood and took on all of the pain and bore all the sins of the world and did whatever possible to show you a glimpse of what sacrifice looks like. Husbands, do this as Christ gave himself up for her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless in this same way 
husbands ought to love their wives as their own body. So when we get a picture of what submission looks like, it is welcome from both parties because in the beginning it says submit to one another. Yes, that it, by the way God created us, Adam came first to lead and out of the rib came his beautiful wife Eve. And the reason why we are here, husbands as men of Christ, is not to have some subservient woman do all of our bidding. It's to provide. It's to pastor. It's to protect. It's to literally pour out our lives like Christ poured out for the church. And I don't know about you, but when I look throughout the life of Christ, it is constantly giving. It is constantly sacrificial. So then why wouldn't a woman who has a husband that gets this understanding of submission, why wouldn't a woman submit? Why wouldn't she prefer her husband to lead in that order? How do we get it twisted? when things get out of order. We see pop culture and we romanticize chick flicks and romantic comedies and we watch this show where it emphasizes and it magnifies the flirting stages, the stages where the hormones are going through the roof. And I, I've never felt this way before about another human being in the first couple of months. And they're dating and it's spectacular. And he looks into her eyes and says some ridiculous phrase like, you complete me. We're flawed human beings, woman and man, living in a fallen world. And so there is no possible way that another person could ever, in their dysfunction, in the pukas that they have in their soul, that could ever complete me as a human. There is a void in every single human that only Christ can fill, can I get an amen to that? There is only a place where Christ can fulfill, but we see these glimpses and pictures and like, I'm just waiting for that one person to fill the gap in me, but another human could never do what only Christ can do. This is who completes you. It is Jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith. So what we need to do that gives us some freedom to not have chaos in our relationships is adjust our expectations, number one. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. My wife is not here, so a lot of stories are going to come out today. But she is here on the E Ohana. And if you're watching, text me. I will feel the vibrate in my pocket. <laughs> or you're watching Netflix and we'll have words afterwards. Just kidding. Our dates were different. I met her when she had a two year old son. His name is Dylan. He just graduated, and he thinks he's a grown man. That's another topic. I think that's next week. <laughs> and so when we go on dates, it was hard for me to spit game at Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> trying to holler at her with, like, pooping diapers and changing and smelling, all of that good stuff that happens. And my expectation, when I had dreamed in my early 20s of what my life would look like and what my wife would be like on my prayer journal, I did not journal that down. 
to be honest, TBH, like the young ones say. But then when God unveiled the blinders from my eyes and I saw the gold in her heart, not that I bypassed the reality that she has a child, I knew that in the proper time, God gave me the grace to adjust my expectations. And then we started dating. And then we got engaged really quickly. Some people ask, well, how long did you guys date before you got engaged? I think we dated for about a year. And then I popped the question. I asked her mom for permission because her dad passed away when she was young. And she told me no. And I said, I wasn't asking. <laughs> I was telling you. Mama Lana, she loves me now. I take her on trips all over the world. And then we got married. And then I thought, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be easy because I became a husband and a dad in an instant. Instant couple noodle marriage family. But the tension increased in the early years because our expectations were different. She expected me as a man of God, which I am, to be on the same page with raising our son, her son. It was hard. And I had to be honest, like, you need to give me grace because I don't know how to do this. I don't know how what you've walked since he was in your belly and was born and you reared and you raised. Like, I don't know how to do this. You need to give me grace. And there was a lot of conflict because of unrealistic expectations. As soon as we realized that I couldn't fulfill that need in that moment, that it took some time when she allowed the grace of Christ to flow in our relationship I got with the program. It took some time. And I imagine that some of the tension points that you go through, that you are in with your spouse or in your family, and it maybe it's it could be anything relational. Typically, it deals with unrealistic expectations that you put on another person. And when we look at them with the lens of Christ and how Christ sacrificially gave without expectation. I'm going to do this and you're going to do this. No, 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 no. Jesus poured it out sacrificially and he gave of himself without that expectation. When we allow God to flow that way through us, and we adjust our expectation, we can find peace, harmony, uh, harmony, and balance. Point number two. We need to empty our entitlement. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> Giving up the right to be right. I am wired by nature to be black and white. It is what it is. It's right. And when I hold on to that position and I'm lockstep into, well, this is right, I miss out on other angles. My wife, Ray, lives in the gray. And that's not a bad thing. She'll always say, well, did you consider... I don't know why I just made her sound like an elderly lady. <laughs> but she's not here. She's on Netflix. Just kidding. She's on the Iohana. Have you considered that perhaps you might think that you're right, but what about feelings? Did you consider that person's feelings? A poster at Punahou wrecked my life. I was at a speech competition and I saw this poster, the, probably the greatest thing Punahou ever produced. 
apologize if you are a buff and blue. But I don't give much love to Obama's alma mater. It says, it's better to be kind than to be right. That thing tattooed my mind for so many years, being a person that is fixated on this is true and this is not. This is black and this is white. Have you ever considered that there are different angles? Sometimes I am so lockstep, lockstep into my position of being right and what that is is entitlement. God says to empty, give yourself up, empty yourself up of that entitlement. I talk about jujitsu a lot. It's one of my passions. In jujitsu, when you are trying to submit another person, you have to get the right position before submission. You need to have position before submission. What does that mean? When I go with white belts who go super spastic and crazy because they don't know, they start attacking my arm when they're in my guard. Now, you don't need to know this thing. I'll just break it down really simple. They'll see my arm like this. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to submit it. But my anaconda legs are around their waist grip it's called the guard and i'm on my back and they think that they're in a good position but they're not i'm in a good position they're out of position trying to attack and submit in being in a wrong position and as they attack they expose their back and when you give up your back in jujitsu you're dead I am going to get you. And so I do. And I grab their back. And then they get all frustrated and flustered because I thought I got you. And I say, Aiden, position before submission. I said that Aiden trains jujitsu. Position before submission. So when I am in this discussion, healthy discussions or f fights with my beautiful, gorgeous, hot wife, and I'm coming from a position of being right, and then I'm saying stupid things like, submit, woman. This is how it is. I'm operating, acting out of position. So how could I ever expect? Submission from my wife. Position before submission. Understand where you're standing. My position as a husband should be that of Christ, who gave himself up, who emptied his entitlement, who emptied his authority and power to death on the cross so that we could find life, so that we could experience how it's supposed to be. So when I get into the right position of humility and sacrifice, I can find a submissive wife. She'll find a submitted husband to Christ who doesn't have to rely on his right, his machismo, like I'm the head of the household. This is my way. I said it. Father has spoken. That will only last so long. That will never build into a healthy relationship into the future. And then you're going to find your position alone. I want to be real right now. Because sometimes you can hold on to the wrong positions for the sake of being right. And then you're in the process of losing everything. Empty your 
entitlement. We'll end with this final point. We're going to create the environment of enjoyment. Children, and this hops over to Ephesians 6. It's our family seminar today. Children, obey your parents. And all the children said, amen. Oh, I guess we got some work to do. I got time at 944. I got time. Children... Noah, obey your parents in the Lord. All the parents are like, yeah, preach it, Pastor. For this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy, somebody say enjoy, long life on the earth. Fathers, ooh, oh, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Dylan is not two anymore. He's a young man. He's not a grown man who pays all the bills. So we had to make that distinction. You're a young man. And he drives a Yoda. Black, unlifted Yoda. And he was bringing home tables and chairs in his truck. And we needed to load that thing back in the garage I was with the two younger ones, and Ray was just so happened to be in the garage at that time. And he backed up into the garage at the very beginning of the driveway where all the tables in the tailgate should be in the garage to make light work, to make work easy. And in my mind, I started getting furious that it was so far away, 10 feet away, this black Toyota Tacoma. And I was belting out because he's pounding the sounds and he can't hear me. Back it up. Back it up. Just like that. And he doesn't do what I screamed out to do. He gets out of the truck to get the tables ready. I said, look how far, look how far you are. Like it was a mile. <laughs> and then this audacious 13 year old named Zeal looks at me and says, you're acting like Papa. And I love my dad, but he got tendencies, <laughs> impatient tendencies. And I vowed not to be so impatient as a grown man father. No, I'm not being like Papa. Then Ray chimes in, yeah, Ray? Chiming in over there on the digital device. You are being like your father. I'm just trying to talk to him so he can hear me. He's so far. He goes back into the truck. It's a true story. I shared it at my small group. He backs up literally one more yard. Extremely still far away. And then my frustration just turns into clapping. <laughs> I'm not joking. Because he wasn't getting where I was coming from. And that 13-year-old 
that. That's Papa, right there. That, what you just, that is what it is. And I could have slapped him upside the head. I paused. I said, you, you're right. And everything that I almost vowed not to be in that moment, I started acting out of that crazy, impatient Papa-isms. I'm gonna be a Papa one day. I'm excited for that. In like 20 years, not like now. <laughs> and I vowed, and I still, I'm, I'm a work in progress, to have a dynamic with my children that they're not afraid or scared to have a conversation with dad. That we can talk about stuff. We can be real. That I can literally look them in the eye without any hindrance and say, I love you. I never heard that. But I can make a choice to break that cycle that was passed down from generation to generation, but showing love, the Bible says, to a thousand generations for those who honor the Father, that I would adjust my expectation as of what I saw my dad do when I grew up, that would empty out my position of being right because I'm the dad, and my word is final. And then if I truly want to have an environment that I enjoy and that my family enjoys, then I need to adjust all of those position and take on the heart of the father. With all my mistakes as a human, and the father still takes me in, and Jesus still loves me, I need to give that and extend that to my kids. I need to extend that to my wife. And as the worship team makes their way to come up to the front, I pray that you would posture your hearts right now in a position to receive, to receive some grace, because I feel like there are some blockages within the family unit that is here today. Mine is not imperfect. I shared our flaws. I was transparent today. I pray that you would be transparent before the Lord in this time. Father,